When you start living with the end in mind, everything starts to change. What are people going to say about you? What message is your life going to speak when you're long gone? Because you weren't born by accident. You didn't just happen to be where you're at and happen to watch this video. There is always a reason. So uh, welcome, guys. Welcome to the Fuse Life podcast, episode number 82. Uh, my guest today, this morning, this afternoon, wherever you are, has an amazing story with amazing experiences, not just theory or fluff that he's thought up, but he's been through stuff. And I'm super, super excited to to hear about everything that he's been through. And um, I think we're in for a treat. So Derek, aka Truth Seeker, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. And you know, it's an honor to be here. And I've been keeping up with your work for a while too. We've been friends on Facebook and watching some of your interviews and, and the stuff that you're putting out, encouraging people and um, teaching them how to live their best life, man, how to manifest the dreams and goals and visions that God has for them, bro. So salute to you and everything that you're doing. Awesome. Thank you so much. So let's get into it, man. For those that don't know you, can you tell us a little bit about you, what you're doing, where you are and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I wear many hats. Um, so I guess, you know, for the music thing, like people know me for different different things, you know. So sure. some people are a fan of my music. So I do spiritual and esoteric hip hop. I started out as a gospel artist doing Christian rap for about 10 years or so. And then so as my uh, experiences and my studies and those things kind of begin to go a little bit deeper, I started including a lot of that stuff within my music, whether it was reading books that were taken out of the Bible or talking about angelic encounters and putting that within my music as well. Like your average, you know, church outreach going out into the community to win souls for Jesus. Like, and you're talking about angel experiences, it doesn't really go off well. So mm -hmm. uh, my music's kind of evolved over the years and uh, as well as my message and the people that I'm reaching out to. So I do spiritual, esoteric hip hop, everything I believe that I do complements one another. So you mentioned the podcast, the podcast kind of like, uh, explains a lot of the stuff that I just kind of mentioned nonchalantly within mm -hmm. the music. If I talk about an angelic encounter, the podcast, I can go into a little bit deeper ex experiences and and even pick people's brains who have had similar experiences as well. And mm -hmm. uh, in my book as well, just to kind of on that same uh, topic and the friends topics of spirituality and uh, spirituality in the Bible as well, demystifying the occult and some scary stuff that's in the Bible. And so they all... Um, complement one another. My book Spirit Realm came out the end of 2019. And so it's all real cohesive. Everything that I do, I don't think the message has changed. It's all the same message and just trying to encourage people and, and stuff. And so just using as many mediums as I can to get that message out. Yeah. Wow. So you are doing a lot of things. Can we rewind back to kind of the beginning of your journey? So like your childhood and how did you get into this? Your first experience with the Lord? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I trace everything back to my childhood as well. And like you, when I interview people, I want to, you know, hear, yeah. hear those first experiences with people and talk about the childhood. So for me, um, when I was four years old, I remember having what they call a sleep paralysis um, mm. episode where I woke up in the middle of the night and felt that I was being pinned down to my bed by two mm. uh, dark entities. There were just black figures that were pinning me down to my bed and uh, woke up and didn't know if I couldn't breathe. I knew I was too scared to to uh to speak or to move that they would know that i was um uh up so that experience stuck with me even at that early age and so uh, as i begin to grow up and become a teenager and stuff we have sleepovers and parties and stuff and i would always ask people whether we we're telling ghost stories i'd say hey has anybody ever had this ex experience mm. happen and some people would say yeah my dad had it happen and they, mm. they, they said it was witches and these are witches that come upon you in the middle of the night and suck your energy and you know you hear different stories over the years mm. about bringing that stuff up so um that opened me up to ask bigger questions even at an early age and to be into movies that had that kind of stuff in it whether it's horror movies or supernatural thrillers or movies with ghosts and the paranormal and so i just begin to be intrigued with that stuff at an early age all stemming mm. from this experience that i had when i was four years old so that's what mm. kind of opened my mind to be, begin to look into a lot of that stuff, whether it was in movies and then eventually get into books and witchcraft books and stuff like that as a, a, a early teenager. So, Wow. So at this time, there's no Jesus in your house, no talk of God or anything like that. Um, not really. Um, it was all, it was always done as like the only idea we had of, of God or Jesus was like a punisher. 
Like he's going to okay. get you. Like if you do something bad, then then uh, God's going to punish you. Or like I know my mom would bring it up with stuff like if we was don't play with Ouija boards because God will punish you. It was kind of strange because she would always go back. I would hear her talk about God punishing you. And then I would hear the devil's going to get you. So it was like God and the devil. It was like interchangeable in my household yeah. as a kid just hearing that, you know. So wow. But, uh, we went to a, a small Baptist church when we were little as well, uh, like okay. Hellfire Brimstone stuff. Sure. And yeah. So as far as any type of Christianity is concerned, it was that. But that wasn't fun. It was scary. It was degrading, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm. So just quickly looking back now, because I know a lot of people who've had these experiences that you're talking about, like some kind of paralysis in their sleep and they can't speak or something like that. Like what is your opinion on what's happening there now when you look back? Man, I've, it's still even hard to say, you know, as a, a matter of fact, I mean, because even with those experiences, you know, when we're talking about you, some would say demons or some would say shadow beings or, you know, some would say aliens, you know, they kind of tie all of this stuff together. So to say for sure, this is what it was that visited me at four years old is really is hard to say. But my my studies have have shown me that there's this like this almost like a rite of passage like mm. people who are being marked at an early age. And it almost seems mm -hmm. like you're being scared away because you have a calling on your life to touch anything spiritual that it just, mm. this demonic type negative experiences kind of scares you to stay away from it. And it's almost like a veil that you have to pass through that, that you, that you want to look into it, that you want to know what happened to you. And so some people take this stuff to their graves and never speak on it, never look into it. And you, you talk about it and they just break down into tears because it's so strange to to speak about. And they think that they're mm -hmm. crazy and no one else has had these experiences. So when we start talking about this stuff, then it brings other people out the woodwork where they feel more comfortable that they can embody their story or at least try to look into it a little bit more. So it, it seems like, like people are being marked at an, at an early age that they're going to be doing something great for God. And the enemy tries to come in and scare them away from that destiny or to try to take them out as at an early age. Yeah, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. And so now you are a teenager and now you're getting into this realm deeper. Or what's going on? There? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got, got in really deep and um, man, uh, just started researching, uh, getting a bunch of books and and studying them all and trying them all. And um, and I ended up uh, meeting a, a warlock and the warlock, he would be able to teach us like hands on and we'd have parties at his house and he would just we'd pick his brain all night about the occult and about demons and how they operate and what he's seen and all this kind of stuff. And so he kind of like taught me hands on. And uh, wow. I was like 13 years old going to these parties and just picking his brain all night. And um, so I ended up uh, getting in pretty, pretty big into that. And um, I, I've been a Christian a few years before though. So I ended up getting born again at a, a Bible study a few years before I got really deep into the occult. Um, somebody that we were living with, my, my mom's boyfriend, her son was a Christian. He was going to Bible college mm. and stuff. And he became like an older brother type to me. And he would pick mm. me up and bring me to church and all that kind of stuff. And well, wow. he would he would ask me to go and I never would want to go, go to church and um, ask me to go to Bible studies. Didn't want to go until he said he asked me one day and I told him no. But then he said, you may like may like this Bible study. And he said, there's going to be a prophet there. I said, okay, well, what's a prophet? He said, a prophet is like a Christian psychic. And so for me, like being interested in that kind of stuff, I was like, yeah, that sounds, that sounds pretty cool. I'll go check that yeah. out. So yeah, I ended yeah. up going to this, uh, pr just prayer meeting Bible study. And, um, when I was there just in this little apartment, it's like 13, 14 people in a small apartment and they're listening to worship music and everybody's praying and like they have their hands lifted and their eyes closed and the people look like they're in this a different realm they look real mm -hmm. blissful and some people are crying and it's just really a peaceful experience and so one of the guys came up to me and sat down on the couch next to me and asked me if i wanted to uh ask jesus to forgive me of my sins and just thinking to myself i said yeah like i don't want him not to forgive me you know what i'm saying it's like mm -hmm. nah, i'm good i said yeah i look like him to forgive me he said well let me lead you in a prayer and it was just asking him to come into my life and acknowledging the work that he did on the cross on my behalf. Mm. And um, when, when I prayed that prayer, um, I felt this tremendous fire come within me and enter into me and burn out all the wrong that I had ever done. I was shaking, trembling, crying, and my body was just 
uh, full of heat. And, and, and uh, it was the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit upon profession, just mm. asking them to come into my life. And boom, the Holy Spirit came into me, changed me. And that was in 1998. And so I gave wow. my life to the Lord then. And um, but I only walked with him for a couple months until I started. I met the warlock and a bunch of friends at school. And then I got really deep into the into the occult after having that born again experience in 1998. So you're you're not having any sense of like, this is wrong. Or I'm going with yeah. this warlock. Is this something not right? Yeah. I mean, but, you know, that's kind of like one of those things like. You know, you, you want the stuff you're not supposed to have. That's just like human mm -hmm. nature. They tell you not to do it. But, so you want to do it even more, mm -hmm. you know. So there was that there. I mean, I got I got with the wrong crowd at, at school and, and they were like doing acid and, and doing drugs and stuff like that. And so I guess to fit in, I, you know, the Christian thing goes on a back burner, even if you do believe like your faith to impress people and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. as a teenager, I definitely yeah. get on the back burner and begin to um, go after the occult stuff even more. Yeah. So we titled this thing like a devil experiment gone wrong. So let's go into this experiment. What happened? What were you doing? Yeah. I mean, I would say, you know, um, with that, like that's the, you know, where I was at and then getting really deep into it and, and working with this warlock. And um, we started to uh, just do a bunch of different practices, a bunch of different uh, invocations and trying to do different rituals and all of these different books and I knew that the spirit world was real. I knew that the, the Holy Spirit and Christianity was was real. So the opposite had to be real as well. So um, I started making packs with with entities and demons and doing all of the rituals and stuff. But it was almost like none of them worked. Like there was over like probably a six month period or so where I would do different meditations and meet different guides and all that kind of stuff. And nothing would work um, until it seemed like they all worked at the same time. So mm. there was just this one experience that um, I was sitting on the couch with my girlfriend. We were living together in Louisiana and um, uh, something opened up a portal and pulled me in this trance and in mid conversation, watching a movie with my girlfriend. And um, I turned pale. I couldn't breathe. And I was seeing shapes and colors and hearing whispers and foreign languages and all types of stuff just in front of me. And I was pale, couldn't move, couldn't breathe. And all of a sudden I came back and I'm crying, trying to catch my breath. And it's just this weird portal that I got sucked in in mid conversation. And um, and it started happening more frequently. And it was scary each time. Couldn't breathe, couldn't make sense of what was going on. And it didn't I don't think it took too many times for that to happen until I was like, hold on, man, this is this is crazy. Uh, I, my body started going downhill. I started coughing up blood um, every day. Um, I started going schizophrenic. I started hearing voices. They would speak to me through other people. Uh, I would look at other people's eyes and they would stare at me and I could see things about them and hear stuff. And um, I was uh, I think I was 16 at this time, you know, just a wow. teenager and um, going out in, into public and I couldn't look nobody in the eyes. I remember uh, wanting to order something from a fast food restaurant with my girlfriend and I'd have to whisper in her ear what I wanted because like just all of the energies and the demonic oppression, I couldn't even look at people. Um, because of like the heavy guilt, shame and condemnation that comes with those those type of entities was upon me. And um, I opened up a door that I didn't know how to close and I was going mad. And um, so that was when everything got real. And there was you we hear footsteps running through the house at night and wow. just a lot of crazy stuff. I've had beings uh, appear to me out of, out of thin air and um, that were there that wasn't in your mind. I didn't meditate and see them. They literally appeared and myself and other people with me seeing these entities. And so the the veil between this world and the next was so thin that uh, I was going mad. There was, I had no, you know, protection. Um, and so I got to a place where I was like at, at wit's end, you know, I reached out into the other side and something reached back. And mm. I, I knew about the peace and the presence of the Holy spirit that I had just a few years before. Um, and I remember just laying on the couch and, turning the channels on the television and, and watching like Benny Hinn or whatever, where everyone's like worshiping the Lord and the Holy Spirit's moving. And I would just like reminisce because I was in this place of just total uh, madness, but I would see the peace and people crying. I was like, man, that's real y'all. And I would tell my friends like, man, turn that all. That's fake, man. It's Charlotte's it's, man. They just want your money. I was like, no, nah, that's real, man. I remember mm -hmm. being at that prayer meeting, you know, and, and the bliss that I had in Christ. And, um, but it just lit a hunger within me. And I knew that that was the only way. 
because I was going to have to go to a madhouse. I, if I was to go to a doctor and tell them what was happening to me, they would put me in a straight jacket and put me on medication and pills. And so I ended up uh, getting my girlfriend to pray with me after one night of having a bunch of weird attacks. And uh, she prayed with me. And then the next morning I woke up, went into our room and just all the um, altars and everything that we had. I just threw everything away, everything away, wow. threw it in the garbage. And she's crying in the living room. What are you doing? I was like, I got to get my life back with Christ. Got to get my life back to Christ. And so I threw all that stuff away. And um, I told her, I said, listen, you can either follow Christ with me or you can go live with your parents because I'm through. I have to. I'm going insane. And she's like, I don't believe in Jesus. How are you going to make me believe in something that I don't believe in? I was like, well, if we can believe in the fairies and the goddesses and the gods and, you know, all of this other stuff that we're believing in, you can believe in Christ. You can, mm. you know, just give it two weeks is what I told her. And mm. if our life is a 100 percent better in two weeks, then I'll go follow any God, Satan that you want me to do. Just because mm. I was confident that that this was this was it. And uh, and she did. And she she gave her life to the Lord with me. And um, what whatever like band T-shirts and stuff that we had and CDs and witchcraft books, we tried to salvage what we could as far as selling it to get money. So I sold like 40 or 50 witchcraft books that we stole, got the money and we went and bought Bibles with them and wow. um, threw away all of my uh, clothing and band T-shirts and witchcraft shirts and went and got a. Uh, um, stuff to wear to church <laughs> and we started going to church we had a few dollars to our name i bought a uh, christian music cd you know yeah. worship cd and then and bought bibles man and that was in september 7th of 2000 so i've wow. been walking with the lord ever since and made that drastic uh change in my life wow so i understand the altars and uh, the witchcraft books but why band t-shirts and uh why why did you feel you had to get rid of all of those things yeah. Uh, why? Well, I mean, at the time, it was stuff that a lot of that music talked about, you know, the occult. It talked about making packs with demons and and cutting yourself and and a lot of that kind of stuff. And those emotions and things like that, that you just kind of loathe in. You think you're venting, mm -hmm. but a lot of that music, you just loathe in it. And so spirits are around those music, the, that music as well. For me, it was really crazy stuff like Corn and Marilyn Manson and those kind of things that I was into. And, um, you know, it, it definitely like there's witchcraft spells and, and all of that stuff and talking about just far out Aleister Crowley entities that he would work with. It's all mixed in, in, in the music. So that definitely had to go. I knew it, you know, day one. Yeah. So that get worship uh, music. And I actually went out and bought a POD CD because I knew okay. they were a Christian band. I still like rock music. So I bought a POD CD as well. And yeah. Music, so. Wow. Man, okay, so you have this drastic change, and then uh, what church are you going to? What kind of church? What what happened? Did you start having? Well, so what happened life? is uh, I got in the phone book. <laughs> I went to the yellow pages, and for, for people who remember what those are, yeah, um, yeah. we called every church that we can think of, like all the churches that were listed. And I called and I left a message on the answer machine because it was like a Saturday, and I mm. left messages in on fifteen different churches. And one church called me back because I called them and told them I, I have felt like I was demon possessed and I needed to pray with somebody. One church called me back and the pastor actually came to the house wow. and, and, and met with us. And back in the day, house pastors used to make house calls. Yeah. You know, they used to go out and, and pray for the sick and go hang out in the hospitals and, and sit with yeah. the elderly and the dying. They don't really do that too much anymore. Man, it's not popular. Some of them do, but that was what they did, you yeah. know, and this guy made a house call and he came out and, uh, and prayed with me and, and my girlfriend and ended up picking us up and bringing us back and forth to church. And so we ended up going to church there, but it was still like, I was still in between realms. Mm. Like even even doing that, like I felt so much peace and freedom, but it was still like, like I was in between worlds, like throughout the day, and it was insane. It was it took a long time for me to to really get my bearings back and and get you know even you know demons cast out of me and receive prayer and renounce a lot of things that were still open you know clinging on to to my mind and stuff. So, you know. wow. And so as you're maturing and going through this journey. Did you start having any experiences in the lights? Like you start having angelic encounters or Jesus encounters, yeah. anything like that? Yeah, man. So like, I mean, obviously like most people, um, when you come out of that stuff, you got to get rid of it. I couldn't be around incense. I couldn't be around mm. people drinking, smoking weed. If I smelled it out, I, I would have a panic attack because it reminded wow. me of those entities that I was dealing with. 
in that lifestyle. So um, anything like that, I, I ran from at the time. And most people do, you know, incense, candles, all that kind of stuff. Um, mm. But eventually, yeah, through through I mean, we 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 would have beautiful encounters just in the Holy Spirit. You know, it just in it just in deep prayer and uh and, and seeing God move upon people and fill people with the Holy Spirit and and uh and that and that was like the greatest mystical encounter ever, you know, and still is. Um, but as far as yeah, the the angelic years later, you know, through fasting and prayer and through through studying and, and believing for certain things that were happening in the Bible, that it was mm. you know available for for us, you know, for today mm. experiences and and uh angels and and all of the stuff that the disciples operated in. And, and so I started having different encounters with, with beautiful benevolent uh, entities as well. So as far as angels and, and having beautiful sightings and stuff like that too. Amazing, man. And um, I mean, there's so many ways we can go here, but so you start this journey now, obviously you're not a traditional Christian right? in anything that you do. So how did all of this start happening for you in terms of Truth Seeker and putting out music and doing a podcast and starting to broadcast the things that I think a lot of Christians are not that open to, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's a hard journey, you know, and owning your truth, you know. Um, you know, just for me, I was just a Berean. I just was taught how to study. So a lot of the stuff that I was experiencing – I wanted to make sure that I can prove it in the scripture. So it's just got notebooks and notebooks and stuff of, of study and stuff and breaking it down. And first of all, wanting to prove to myself that what I was experiencing was biblical. And if it mm. wasn't, then I didn't want it. But if, if the disciples, if the prophets were privy to this knowledge that is lost to the majority of Westerners now, I wanted to, uh, you know, to tap back into that, the ancient path that spoke of in the scriptures. And so, that that led to a lot of different things that is mentioned of in the scriptures like it uh you know the angelic encounters is huge um uh, stargazing and uh, astrology uh, the zodiac all of these things are within the bible but just as you know we're told that that it's not and we're told that mm -hmm. if it is it speaks against it in a demonic sense and so the more studying i did i've seen that that stuff is in the scriptures that the the prophets were stargazers that the word seer literally means a stargazer and uh, and it would get into a lot of other broader things uh, with that we, I guess, as Christians have given to the occult. We've given mm -hmm. it to the New Age, such as deep forms of meditation, what mm -hmm. we would call divination or the casting of lots and a lot of this stuff that the prophets did and bragged about that they could get clear answers from Yahweh from using divination. Mm -hmm. we're, we're told that, that all of that is demonic, the stars are demonic, that the angels are demonic demonic and and just all kinds of stuff so for me having those experiences and then wanting to share them naturally as a psalmist it just began to come out of my music you know i would begin to write about this stuff and these encounters and stuff and so um, um when i began to be more open about it and even do a podcast because i couldn't talk to my friends about it so i would do a podcast and i would just invite people who wanted to have these conversations on and i'd pick their brains and we just roll ideas off of it and it was done on a, on a public pedestal though back you know back in the day and uh a lot of people seeing what i was doing and i would title them these really intriguing titles of the episodes and people would want to yeah. click and watch and check it out and but the religious community uh, they they really wasn't going for because it it's uh, scary, it's taboo, and you know that anything that we don't understand, we demonize it within Christianity. Yeah. So, um, you know, as me being a Christian artist, hip hop artist at first, Christian rapper, and I would tell my testimony and speak to youth groups and uh, youth revivals and hundreds of kids and stuff. Eventually, you know, they quit calling me, you know, and they mm. started telling people to stay away from me. A lot of people that even looked up to me said that I had gone back into witchcraft and I was now a Satanist and it would just just all of this different stuff that, that was yeah, happening. So for me, of being somebody who was loved within the church community and, and celebrated to now, like your people you do ministry with are like, yes, yeah, stay away from that guy, man. He's just, he, wow. he fell away from the Lord. He got back into witchcraft. It's like, you know, none of that's true. So um me writing all my notes down, like I wanted to be able to to explain and show people biblically a lot of the stuff in the scriptures, but no one really cared about it. 
you know, nobody wanted to go deep or whatever. So that was a very hard experience, you know, to uh, to kind of get ghosted or, or excommunicated from your your uh, family that people literally tell you that they love you before they hang up a phone call with you. They tell you, I love you and hang up. And then now you never speak to them again because they seen a, a Facebook article or you shared or something like that. So um, owning my truth, like early on, uh, is just, I, I had to do it because there were so many people who were in a very similar, similar experience uh, to me that they wouldn't talk about this stuff for fear of losing their job, for fear of not being able to, maybe they're a worship leader, maybe they're over a Christian radio station and they would write me messages and stuff. And I say, man, I'm going to talk, I have to talk about it because my friends who have had these same encounters won't talk about it. And that's weird too. When you think about it, like people keep this stuff with them. My cousin who was with me whenever I had this entity appear to, to me out of the thin air, knocked us both to the ground, screamed at us. He's never spoke about this to anyone. Mm. Me, I'm telling as much people as I can, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going on radio interviews. I'm, I'm uh, you know, doing a podcast or writing about it in my book, you know, and uh, I just felt an obligation, you know, to, to the mysteries and, and to the things that people were hiding and keeping away. And for, for anything, the obligation was to just a, a younger version of myself who just needed somebody to confide in, to know that they're not alone, that they're not crazy. And yeah, a lot of these things that we're having, supernatural experiences, um, a lot of things that were kind of deemed occult that are in the scriptures. And, and people need to know that because there's a lot of condemnation and you can't pray this stuff away. You know, and it definitely comes from a lot of prayer and fasting, asking God to take this stuff away. If it's demonic, we don't want to be a part of it. If it's not of you, I don't want it. And just begging God and then it never going away. They're just like even the passion and fire for these things end up getting deeper and you get more hungry for this stuff. And God trusts you with it. You know, so that was something that that was that, that landed in my lap. And so just being faithful with it. Like it's something that I felt like I had to do to demystify it and just to let people know that they're not alone. Cause you know, if you, you can't go to your pastor with it, they're going to try to yeah. pray against it. I had it happen, you know, whether it was dreams and visions about the future and stuff that was going to happen prophetically, most churches don't even know what to do with the prophetic, uh, let alone entities appearing to you and, and, and all this kind of stuff, or even angels coming to you with a message, like go tell your pastor mm -hmm. that, like, you know, you know, we're growing for sure. Yeah, yeah. We have to. But, you know, in, in, during that time and it's still there now, but like you had to go to the new age because mm -hmm. your pastor didn't have the answers for you. They're going to try to mm -hmm. pray it away. They're going to try to rebuke it. And if it's of the Lord, you can't rebuke the Lord. It's not going to happen. It's going to keep coming. You're going to keep having those experiences. And um, so people would go to the occult and I went to the occult. I had to go talk. I had to go have conversations with these people. I had to go talk to them to try to make sense of stuff. And I would have those conversations that I couldn't have in church, even from a mm -hmm. biblical perspective. I was able to bring a Christian perspective to a lot of these supernatural things that were happening in my life and the lives of others. So um, that's just one thing that I've, I've, I've taken with me. Why I knew I had a responsibility to uh, just to be open and honest early on. So much ridicule. Mm. laughed at, uh, made fun of, stay away from him, demonized. And now the work that we've done in owning our story, now people are, are celebrated. And now Christians ask me to come on their podcast and they invite me to their churches to speak. And, and they really, a lot of them are starting to see the value in, in my ministry and what I bring to the table. So um, in their podcasts and their churches and the Christian mystical movement is at an all time high making yeah, a research yeah. because people are having these encounters and now they don't feel so, al so alone because they found podcasts like mine or yours or mm. however, however many is out there. But early on it was, there was nobody speaking about this and it wasn't something that you got paid to do. You know, you were, you were taking a risk. You were rolling the dice and, and get ready to forfeit everything that you love for this truth. So that's the, that's my journey. Wow. Hey, just quickly, I had to put these headphones on because there was a bit of an echo. So I'm so sorry, guys. There was uh, some kind of echo going on. It's my bad. Uh, hopefully you still could hear well enough. This hasn't happened before, but I think it's good now. I just want to quickly touch on a few things, bro, because, you know, you talk about being excommunicated and going through the season. It would have been very tough, maybe very lonely. And uh, maybe you were tempted to go back, but then you know you're going against yourself. But I speak to you now and I know there's no bitterness, there's no anger, there's no, you know, any kind of malice. Because you can speak to some people who are mystical 
but when yeah. they speak you can still hear a bit of yeah you know there's some sharp edge to them as they yeah. talk so can you speak to that on the condition yeah. of your heart and how did you make sure you didn't go down that path yeah i mean so weird because like i even knew it i think that even before some offense came in i tried to prepare myself because i know that like when when offense comes in you got to deal with it asap you can't let it harden your heart and um so whether it's forgiveness or, or whatever you got to do you got to deal with it asap and um um you know and, and that, that's one thing that it definitely was hard you know every you know i lost everything you know as far as what i considered to be a christian or um you know ministry and all that what this ministry looked like going forward but having clean hands and a pure heart is uh is what the bible says that we're supposed to do and we can't hold on to any bitterness or any, any malice and um you know there, there's a lot of people who who operate out of that and so um you know, I, I've, I've been there. It was it was definitely hard. One of the hardest times of my life. But it, I think it wasn't until I was able to forgive people and really understand that, you know, the scripture says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And, um, you know, they didn't know what they were doing. And I guess if I look back on it now, I probably would have done the same thing. You know, that you are a threat to to uh, baby Christians. You are a threat to people who are, are new to this. And and um, so but, yeah, you got to deal with it early on. Cause mm -hmm. you'll, you'll take it with you and, and, you know, you'll start what they say, you know, you, if you don't tend your wounds, you'll begin to bleed on, on people who didn't cut you and mm -hmm. it comes out. And, and like you said, people, whether it's people in the mystical movement or um, definitely in the, uh, in the secular mystical movement, there's a lot of, even though they got some deep, crazy wisdom or, mm -hmm. or experiences, there's it's, it's uh it's shrouded with a with with malice. It's shrouded mm. in, in you know what I'm saying bitterness. And for those who are able to discern, it's hard to receive from those people, no matter what they're sharing. And so, mm. uh, to be a, a clean and clear vessel, you definitely got to deal with that stuff asap. And I, I teach that it's a veil that we got to pass through. You know, we call it church hurt or whatever, but I think it's a veil that most of us have to have to uh, to pass through, so we don't get prideful. Mm. We don't feel like we know something that they don't. There's a lot of stuff that comes into play with it man i love this um this is so good so uh, let me hit some questions here that might be a bit random like uh joe Dispenza, you know that name mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on that and the pineal gland and him seeing healing and people getting like you know what you'd call miracles happening at his meetings what are your thoughts on that yeah yeah i mean you know the the secular world and science is starting to, to prove the stuff that we had to just receive by faith and they're showing you the mechanics of of how to you know, to walk in that stuff and to 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 let every day become supernatural and versus these one time experiences that you've happened. I believe that Jesus understood a lot of this. Um, and so these guys are teaching it. And so if it's, you know, every good and perfect gift comes from the father above. So people would like because it didn't come from a Christian packaging. As far as I'm concerned, if it's love and if it's healing, it's in a Christian packaging. It's of Christ. And so uh, I really appreciate what he's doing and many others, many others in that same strain. Uh, Greg Braden talks about mm -hmm. the mechanics of prayer. What happens to your brain when you move into union in prayer? The beautiful thing about this stuff, when you listen to some of these guys, you're going to get something that you're not going to get in church because mm -hmm. they've studied it from a different perspective. They're not biased, you know, and they're just giving you the science of the mechanics of how we would call miracles, but how the mind works as well. So mm -hmm. I don't think that. A lot of stuff that's like every day, it's just mechanics, receiving, uh, grounding. Like there's a lot of spiritual stuff that that should be in our in our day to day lives and it shouldn't be spaced out. This is something that we can practice and walk in on a daily basis. Mm. How do you spell that guy's name? Greg Braden? Greg Braden. Yeah. B-R-A-D-E-N. Braden. OK, so really these guys are not Christian guys, but there are things in there that we can grab is what you're saying, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, you know, once you're rooted in, and grounded in Christ and rooted and grounded in the word, see, that's what that's what allowed me to begin to, as a Christian, begin to look into other things because I can say, OK, that looks a lot like this. This sounds a lot like that. And um, whether it's, you know, spirituality or uh, what we'll call psychic abilities. Mm. Um, if you want to learn psychic abilities, you got to go to the Monroe Institute. You got because all of this stuff's in the scriptures. But the scriptures are just an overview. The scriptures mm. don't specialize in anything. It's not going to tell you how to train yourself and how to mm. hear the voice of the Lord. It's not going to tell you 
how how to go in deep and, and go in deep and in depth and practice it daily. It just gives you an overview of people who were already doing it daily, and it gives you an overview of some of their experiences. So you have to you have to be able to deviate. Um, we're in we're in good territory now because a lot of Christians are deviating and they've went and they've studied other paths and they've come out of the new age and they've lived to t tell the stories because there is some dangerous stuff in there. You know, the, uh, the wheat and the tares are coming up together. So you have to be able to discern that and be able to hold on to Christ the whole time, because, you know, whatever movement you're a part of, you know, the mystical movement may, some may tell you that Jesus never existed or demons aren't real. There's a lot of different things that are kind of creeping into this. And this is even within the church realm. This isn't even, you know, new age or, or the spiritual movement. This is with the doctrines that are coming into uh, the Christian church from this mystical movement. And it's a growing movement. People are leaving the church in droves, but we encourage people to, to not leave Jesus, to not leave Christ behind. And so I think that that's why we see people flock into the Christian mystical movement at this, at this point. Hey guys, I just want to take a quick minute to tell you about our Royal Hybrids group coaching program. Over a year ago, the Lord started speaking to me about a group of people, a tribe that would only get their value, their affirmation, that would only get their identity from who they are in God and nothing else. And from that place, they were going to do great things on the earth. In the last year, we have seen a whole bunch of people jump into our program, solidify themselves in their identity with God, and from that place, actually start to engage their purpose. Fuse Life talks about the six trees, your spirit, your soul, your body, and then your relationship relationships, your finances, and your purpose. We have seen a whole bunch of people come through this, get solidified in who they are, and then begin their own projects, whether it's a teen mums project, whether it's a coaching counseling business, or a painting business, publishing your children's book, publishing a puzzle book. We have seen people do all of these kind of things, and we just know that this is just the beginning. So you want to go to www.fusebornformore.com forward slash royal hybrids or just click the link in the caption and make sure to check out what we are doing we would love to have you as part of our tribe now back to the podcast well it's interesting like um, some of what you're saying you know we i guess religion teaches us that it's the responsibility of your church pastor or members in the church to kind of keep you safe but in reality it's you uh, <laughs> governing yourself right like because otherwise all this craziness happens. But yeah. I wanted to ask you, well, what are your thoughts on false signs? Right? The Bible talks about false signs or, you know, these false prophets that are going to come and do amazing things. What are your thoughts on that and navigating that? Yeah, I mean, we got to look at all this stuff because if it's the mechanics, it's not really it, it's a sign and, and a wonder, but it's a mechanics. People can duplicate it. You learn how to do it and you go out and do it. I mean, that's where we see Simon, the sorcerer who came up to Peter and he wanted he's hey, teach me. Mm -hmm. how to lay hands on people and get them to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I want to get, I want to learn this. And they rebuked them because all of these things are tool They're, He probably could have learned how to do it. They probably mm -hmm. could have mentored him and showed him how to do that. The thing about it is that all of this is tools. And the only thing that changes how you use these tools are your intention. Mm -hmm. A hammer to one person builds a house to another person. A hammer is a, a murder weapon, right? And so prayer is a beautiful tool where we can connect with God, we can connect with the Holy Spirit and with Christ. But for prayer for other people, they prey on people. They mm. make pacts with entities. They're praying to demons and to disembodied spirits, and they're using it for nefarious gain. So with spirituality and signs and wonders, it's just neutral. Nothing in and of itself is, is positive or negative, even mm. symbols. Like I'm covered with symbolism. And depending on who you ask, will give you a different representation, interpretation of these symbols and what they mean. For some, they're beautiful. They're sacred geometry. They talk about the universe or the body and how the body's created. To other people, it's witchcraft. It's everything's demonic that they don't understand. Nothing in and of itself holds the power of, of positive or, or negative within it. We have to charge those things. We have to use prayer for good reasons. We have to <laughs> fast for good means. There's people who are, who are tapping into this stuff and they're using it for for you know demonic or negative reasons and so mm. it all comes down to the intentions wow so let's go deeper then into meditation right because obviously meditation so many people are scared of it but now it's becoming more and more popular what are your um yeah. i guess your thoughts on meditation and doing it in the right way 
Yeah. And does that open doors to amazing encounters and deeper revelation? What are your thoughts for on sure. all of that? For sure, for sure. Um, you know, meditation, again, a tool. If you meditate to ask demons to come and meet you like I did at the age of 16, it's going to open up some pretty weird doors. But if you meditate and uh, you ask for an encounter with the Holy Spirit and you ask for God to show you things that you need to do about your journey, about your destiny, and you're one with the Father through what Christ has done, it opens up the doors to limitless possibilities of what God wants to speak into your heart. It said that prayer is where we talk to God, but meditation is where God talks to us. It's in this wow. place of being silent and listening. And so a lot of that is, um, you know, what people are scared of with meditation, getting the thoughts out of your head, you know, because when you sit down to meditate or to pray, you're going to have all these other thoughts come in mm. and you start trying to clear your mind. Then you're thinking like, how does a washing machine work? What am I going to have for dinner next week? Yeah. Friday? You start thinking about all this stuff, but this is a, a place, the secret place where you're encountering God. And so mm. you have to take uh, captive every thought that is trying to pull you out of that moment and try to make you wander down these little trails. So focusing on the now moment, the place I like to say in between the thoughts, sit in silence, peace, be still and know that I'm God for me um, has changed my life. The, the greatest ex encounters and experiences that I've had with the Lord have been in, in a place of just seeking him. And when mm. maybe have worship music on, maybe getting into scriptures a little bit and just having that time with him and then just going in and, and hanging out with the friends. So meditation is definitely key in, in the Bible. It doesn't really use the, the term meditation as we know it. it talks mm. about meditating, meditating on the precepts and things of God. But it actually talks about it in, in the form of the trance state. Mm. So the, the, the word trance is actually mentioned in the King James Bible. I really like that word. It says they were in a trance on the Lord's day, or this is something mm. that they practiced. And and we would we would call it prayer, meditation, contemplation. And uh, and they would have some pretty profound experiences. They would be in a trance and an angel would appear to them. They would be in a trance or in a dream and God would speak to their hearts and say, hey, don't go to that city. Mm. There, there's an ambush waiting for you. You have to be able to train yourself to listen to God in those places and uh, and, you know, to, to walk in your destiny and to be open for this journey, this road that we're on, God, one of the, the main ways that God speaks in the scriptures is through dreams. And meditation is essentially hacking the dream state. Mm, wow. So, <clears throat> sorry. So we just go deeper here into imagination. You know, people are so scared of their imagination or we've been taught that your imagination is bad and yeah. all this kind of stuff. Can you think of a, an experience where you went into this place and maybe had something happen in that realm? And then you saw real life proof like that, you know, because we could think, like, oh, I'm just making this up and it has nothing to do with reality. Yeah. Do you have any experiences where you had something like that and then it, you saw it even like in the natural, in our normal state? Yeah. Um, you know, but I, I don't think that I, I wouldn't call myself that I made it up, but it's pretty far out stuff. Like I, I didn't like say, hey, I want to see if this happens. I mm. did, but I seen it somewhere first. So the testimonial part the repeatability, even no matter how far out it is, I'm talking about, listen, the possibilities are endless with, with reality and, and, and our imagination. It's limitless. Uh, the Bible says that whatsoever that, that, that you believe for, you can receive it in anything. Mm. So it's just, uh, it's determined about how, how much can you believe for it and how much you'll wait on it, how much energy you'll give that thing. For me, what really changed my life was with the angelic and going out stargazing under the night sky and asking God to let me see the angels under an open sky. And uh, and I seen them on videos. There was a video or two. There was a website that had a lot of Bible verses about the angels and stars moving and all of this stuff. And I and I, I, I lifted my, my level of belief and expectation up and I just kept going out and I and I would spend hours and then eventually it opened up for me. I, the Lord began to let me see uh, these angels traveling back and forth from heaven to earth and going in and out of stars and seeing like whole what we call fleets of of angelic. Uh, the host of heaven is what they're called in the scriptures. And um, so being able to see that like for the first time of like being privy to that, but not privy like I'm special privy as I, I just stood out there and I wanted it bad enough. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I've seen so much. It was at nighttime and even during the day, begin to see stuff during the day. But you're talking about wrecking you and changing my music, my creativity, like 
how real heaven is, that heaven is literally a place out past the stars that the angels travel back and forth from heaven to earth. And the scriptures say that the scriptures are clear on that. And, uh, and to be able to experience that, it made it more real. So that was something that just had an idea of something that I seen that I wanted to to experience. And the Lord allowed me to experience for several months where it was just amazing, mind blowing stuff. Um, and then, like I said, in the demonic realm, you know, I've seen entities that pop into um, our reality. Um, I've seen what we would call fairies, blue little orbs, like a whole bunch of them that came out uh, of the trees and encircled me and my daughter. And we just had this majestic experience just being open to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's, you know, the, the, the nature of the mind and the nature of reality and consciousness, you know, it, it just leads to more questions. I say that I'm yeah. not an expert on any of this, but the, the more questions are like, you know, did did those entities exist somewhere? Did those fairies exist, or did we want to see it bad enough that it showed itself to us in the realm mm. of mani- uh, you know what I'm saying manifestation? So, mm. because I believe that anything is possible for them that believe, all mm. things are possible. If you can believe it, then you can receive it. And whether that's mm. good or that's bad, anything that you want, anything that you can believe in and hold true to it, and stay in that process, that that you can experience it. Anything that you want to do, and so, and and that works. Everything exists. Everything is possible. Anything that you can imagine is already created, whether it's in our reality, on our timeline or in the next. So mm-hmm. it's just this, this this place of how long does it take to manifest and show itself to you? I haven't figured that out. Some stuff is instantly yeah. know, with, with synchronicity, with mm-hmm. just a crazy stuff going on in, in this matrix realm that, that God or the universe is letting us know that we're not alone. I know every thought that you're thinking. I'm with you those kind of experiences to grandiose things about what you're going to do for a living. You know what I'm saying? Your dreams, have they passed you by all of that? And it works on every single level as far as you're willing to take it or as, as much as you're willing to believe. Man, so many places we could go here. <laughs> I, I've had to apply it in every one of them is why I say that. Yeah. So just quickly, what was what your opinion on why some things take longer? take longer to manifest it's hard to say i think that um i think that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the lord that he's the author and finisher and even before we ask something he knows what we're going to ask so Mm -hmm. all of this stuff is lined up but i think that we have to get ourselves in this in this uh place where we're able to receive all things are possible again but we have to be able to receive it and i think that that's grace that that there's things that have to happen and and there's a process there's seed time and harvest it's not instant manifestation and some people pride themselves on that but but the the time and the rain and and, and cultivation all of that's needed you know mm. uh there's the, i've asked god for a platform i've asked him for the nations you know and so if he would have gave that to me when i was hurt when i was bitter and i was jealous and judgmental and he would have given me a large platform i would have ruined it i would have mm. messed it up there was things that that i was believing for that i'm ready for that it may take me three years mm. whether how big they are or whatever. There's things that I have to get out of me. There's levels that I have to um, step up to that. I can't take jealousy with me to this next Mm -hmm. level. The the level that has renowned, the level that I'm trusted with large, large sums of money, there's certain things or certain addictions or whatever it is that you have to let go of because you can't Mm -hmm. take it with you to the next levels. So I think that that's got something to do with it. And I'm thankful for that. Mm -hmm. But if we learn that that's how it operates, then I think that manifestation happens a lot quicker, even almost instantly. Like if you're if you're connected with the Lord, you say, "Yeah, you can't take that bitterness with you." Okay, I'm dealing with the bitterness now. Yeah, I'm gonna go apologize to that person today. I'm mm-hmm. not waiting six months. I'm not letting it fester, you know. And so, a- as we become one one with God and we know His heart, He'll let us know these areas once we're we're, we're cognitive of it. Mm, the maturing, the maturing of a son. Mm -hmm. Wow. So when you said before casting lots and the prophets did that, can you quickly touch on that? Because we've read it many times. I've never quite understood casting lots. They're not flipping a coin. Are they what's going on? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So um, casting lots. Well, we'll just go back to the the, just the word divination, just because it's a scary word that we've given to the occult. Um, We we see that word mentioned in the book of Acts. And when it was used, it was kind of like in a negative connotation with it. It was with the the, uh, woman that was mocking um uh paul who had a, like a seducing spirit on her and when you when you and it actually says that it had a spirit of divination is what it says in most of our 
translations. But whenever you break that word down, the spirit that is mentioned there, it's not divination. Divination is something that the prophets bragged about in the Old Testament that God spoke to them clearly through. Um, but we, we see it there in the book of Acts. So I think that's where we get our biggest misunderstanding it in it. When we break it down to the Greek, it's actually talking about a certain spirit that was um, on this woman, that, that was possessing this woman or influencing her, which is the spirit of Python. Mm. So if you if you go look it up in the Greek, uh, the spirit of divination there, it says the Python and Python is a Greek God that was worshipped at Delphi. Mm. And so that's not what it's talking about. So we go back to the Old Testament and see what it's talking about. So if you just do a simple word study, if you have like Esword or something like that and type in divination, you'll see time after time that Joseph, uh, people were lying to him and he said, hey, you know, I'm good at divination. You know that God will speak to me through divination. You need to watch what you're doing. And he would he would tower it over people as how good that he gotten with this and God would speak to him. So uh, biblically, they would do the casting of lots, whether that's drawing straws, any, mm. meeny, miny, mo, you mm. know, trying to pick somebody to be it. So much so that they believed that God would speak to them so much so that in the New Testament, whenever Judas left and they needed to pick the 13th disciple, they used the casting of lots because yeah. it was between two people. And, and they believed 100 percent that this was the will of God. And it is mm. so much so that, hey, are we supposed to go north or south? Well, let's draw lots. We're going south. That's where the lots fell. That's where God wants us to go. And, wow. and the Bible actually says that it's every decision it says the lot is cast into the lap. It's every decision is from the Lord. Mm. Well, sometimes it's from demons. No, no. Mm. It's every decision is from the Lord. And this was a practice that they had. And uh, the prophets and disciples uh, used it throughout the scriptures. And I find it really interesting, too. They also had the uh, Umen and uh, uh, Thumen. I don't know you know what this is. Mm -hmm. And uh, a Thumen. And uh, there was these two rocks, a, a, essentially a white rock and a, a black rock. And it was like a magical eight ball. One mm. said yes and one said no. And there's different lore to, to say if they just reached into a bag and pulled one out. OK, it's the white one. This is yes. Reach in there, pull out it's the black one. This means no. Some people believe that it would they would magically light up and glow in those things whenever they would ask a question. But this is something that the priest had when it come to making decisions for God. They would reach in and, and grab for these stones and, and get a yes or no answer from God. So. That's something when it comes to that that realm there. Um, and many people say, you know, in, in the New Testament, we don't need that anymore because we have the Holy Spirit. And mm. you may be right, but they're tools. Mm. These are just tools. And so um, we have I think we have the ability for some of that stuff if we want to, if we want to look into it. The Bible definitely uh, paints those in, in, a, in a picture of, of, of a beautiful light. And um it never tells you to stop. You know, it's a lot of people mm. say, yeah, you don't see them. There's a lot of stuff you don't see, don't see happening or, or they keep going. But, you know, mm. to teach it biblically is it was definitely, definitely uh, painted in a good light. Mm. Demystifying the occult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It and back just... too, man. We, we've given them everything, man. Given them everything. Mm. So in your opinion, with all of these experiences <laughs> and kind of all your study and podcasting all these people, 2021 you got this pandemic thing happening and there's obviously the i don't know if we would say the spirit realms more charged now than uh, you know and then the last 20 say 20 30 years ago what are your thoughts on that is there some kind of building up happening right now and the veil is getting even thinner or people are more conscious of it what, what are your thoughts on that yeah i mean yeah we're we're, in, we're living in strange times you know um but I, what I do, what I, what I will say is that um, there, there's a process that happens for a lot of individuals and, and that's for them to become really political. You find out about discrepancies within the politics and, and within uh, society and you feel like your vote can change this. Guys, we can band together and vote. And then you may even get into rallies. You may even get into rioting in the streets and all of these things that are happening. And then you find out, well, hold on, that didn't really didn't really change anything. You know, mm. uh, everything's the same. The policies are the same. It's probably worse. Um, so a lot of people woke up through conspiracy stuff like that. Alex Jones and and those kind of things. And uh, mm. and they begin to, to search it out and, and to find out that, hey, hold on. There's some things that we haven't been told that are that are happening right now within our government. And um, and, and, and they know things that they're not telling us. And so 
the, the natural process that I've seen for myself and many of my peers is that you get into that kind of area, the conspiracy theory. And listen, we're in perfect time for that right now. And rightfully mm -hmm. so. We don't have to go into it. But there's a lot of people there. A mm -hmm. lot of grandmothers, a lot of people who would have never got into conspiracy theories are experts in conspiracy theory. QAnon in the church have become mm -hmm. experts in conspiracy theory. I've seen a, uh, I don't want to say little buzzwords on here anyway, um, but a lot of people are into it. Churches are into this now and the preachers are teaching on this stuff from the pulpit. And you find out, you know, you don't really, you can't really do anything about it. So the next thing that usually happens is sp spiritual awakening. That mm -hmm. once you find out that the only thing that you can change, the only people or person that you can change is yourself. Mm -hmm. And once you wake up to the fact that you uh, are sovereign over your own life and that your thoughts and your diet and everything that you have to say so that you're trying to get other people to see it your way, the only person you can really change is yourself. And mm -hmm. that when you change yourself, you mm -hmm. will indeed influence the people, people that are around you, that more people are watching you than you know, and your influence is bigger than it is. So with, with the conspiracy theories and, and all of that stuff. And again, rightfully so, there's I, there's definitely a reason for people to get into that right now. But the next step is spiritual awakening. So in a, in a massive global shake that's happening, the next step for humanity is spiritual awakening. There's a reason why I'm a, able to talk to you about this stuff without you having the fear of getting canceled or having to delete this episode or mm -hmm. all of this kind of stuff. There's a reason that we can have these talks now. You know, 12 years ago, we couldn't. You know, you were taking a, you were rolling the dice to have someone mm. like me on and talk about this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Even though like, they, brother, I'm still rolling the dice now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> still know, I think, bro, um, like the way I look at it is like we're on a bridge, right? From your pre believer uh, all the way into a mature man, if it's son and yep. fused life. I'm just, we're on this bridge and I've had people from different parts of the bridge just come at me just to facilitate discussion, you know, like how dare you facilitate discussions? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So what would you say is your mission? Truth seeker, what's your mission? What's your purpose? My mission, man, it's just, uh, you know, there's a, it's to love people and to introduce them to the uh, unconditional love of God. I think that it, uh, and, and, and there's many tools and different ways and resources that we were able to type, tap into that. And, you know, the biggest way for me is, is God's love manifests to me and, and to humanity through the cross of Christ. And so, artistically, spiritually, there's a lot of different ways for people to, to come into that relationship, to come into that knowing of how much they're loved by the creator. So if there is a mission, that is definitely the mission for sure. It's, it hasn't changed since the beginning. The, the, the message is still the same. Repent. You know, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Change your, change your mind, change your heart, change the way that you're doing things because there's something better for you. So I think that that's still my mission. Yeah. Awesome. Just before we carry on, uh, do you want to quickly mention to people where they can connect with you and any uh, any specific things you want them yeah, to for sure, look into? For sure. um i have a book out my book is spirit realm angels demons spirits and the sovereignty of god and i go into a lot more detail about how i've uh, uh, come to find out how the spirit realm works through my experiences and then re relating it back to the scripture so that's available on amazon but my podcast my music and everything that i do is is available at truthseeker.com truth s-e-e-k-a-h.com awesome so i've got that link in the caption guys you can click on there and go check out everything i want to quickly ask you about the podcast because you've had some interesting guests obviously and um uh, amazing conversations what about uh, Dr. O? I just want to bring this up a little bit because um, he's out there, man, and he's just so unique, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't even know what I'm really asking. Just yeah, I like Dr. Back. O, man. There's a lot of people, man. There's a lot of people. Everybody has a piece of the puzzle. Everybody has a gym. You know, even a broken clock is right twice a day, you know? So mm. Dr. O, man, he has some really beautiful gems for the body of Christ. And uh, and he's got a lot of wisdom and um, and he's not afraid to, uh, you know, to speak on subjects that are taboo. He's not just he's not just playing, speaking to the choir. Like literally, I heard him in the church the other day rebuke a lot of people that are getting into some strange stuff in, in you know, what I'm saying in, in the mystical. And he mm -hmm. called him out at a church that a lot of that stuff originated at. So it was really interesting. And so, I, you know, hats off to him for that. And uh, but but still just this ability to explore and to take back a lot of our, our, our spirituality. So 
my hats are my hat is off to, to Dr. O and Kirby Delano and there's many people out there doing it on a, 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 a grander scale who had has been doing it for a long time. And, mm. and shout out to them as well for for holding on to Christ and, and to teaching people to be able to see Christ in everything. So I really love those guys. Yeah. So you were at the five DP uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I did three days. Yeah, it was insane. OK, so, so awesome. awesome. Yeah, I, it was so good. Needed it for sure. It was good. Do you think that the time we're coming into now, people are going to need to know how to some of the mechanics and how to function in these realms on a regular? Yeah. And I think, um, you know, you find that, you know, a lot of this stuff with the mechanics of it, the mechanics may be something that, that you can reproduce. But as far as miracles and things like that, um, th there are things that are that are left up to the miraculous. You know, there's even different types of miracles and common miracles, extraordinary miracles, as the Bible says. And uh, I'll give a shout out to Kirby for mentioning that. I didn't know that there was different. If you go back and read the miracles in the Bible or Paul or other people began to go out and do miracles, there were different types that they would do. Would do. Mm -hmm. And some were common where everyone can do them. Some were maybe even in a level where people who aren't followers of the light of Christ can do. But I think mm -hmm. some of them are privy as well to, to the deeper mysteries. And for those who have consecrated themselves to be able to walk in that a, a, a level of holiness that comes with it, because there's there's levels to this. So we definitely just because we're, you know, Greg Braden and a lot of these guys or Joe Dispenza are teaching you the mechanics. There are no mechanics to holiness. There are no mechanics to uh, mm. the God speaking in your ear. That comes through a life laid down through prayer and through supplication. And that's why they rebuked uh, Simon the sorcerer, because he wanted mm. them to teach them the things that came from a life laid down in intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And that's what we mm. all should strive for. Wow. Come on, man. Yeah. And there are a lot of amazing people now uh, kind of coming out of the woodworks in a sense. Maybe they were hidden for seasons, but... So what, can we quickly touch on some of the strange stuff or some of the things that maybe are not so, uh, like, you know, obviously I've had people on the podcast talk about Satan and the devil just being a construct in the mind, you know, or, or an entity that we create. Uh, what do you, can we go there? What, yeah. Uh, so what, yeah, what are I your mean, thoughts on that? There's a lot of different... Um... You know, we're trying to make sense of this stuff, you know, and it's hard to speak with absolutes, you know, mm. um, because things are changing. We're coming into greater revelations. And so um, I do know that it helps to personify entities. It mm. helps the person uh, to be able to say, OK, this was here now and it's gone. It's not there anymore and to, to give it a name. Um, but I, but there are entities that exist. It doesn't exist when you give your awareness to them or create them. There are disembodied spirits that exist that operate on different levels of frequency whether we call them demons we just got to get into the the term of demon and angel it's because like the the term angel just means a messenger there are mm. no there's no race or type of or hierarchy of, of entities that are called the angels those are just mm. they, they're the messengers they're god's messengers and so what what kind seraphim cherubim raphaim malachim uh, the watchers, the the four living creatures, like there's so many more. There's there's the elements or the elementals, these beings that govern the seasons. And, and there's so many out there for us just to say demons or angels, right? They're messengers. And as far as I'm concerned, through my life and my experiences, I've learned that the demons carry messages with them as well. So mm. in, in, a, in, a, in a, a way, they're they're angelic beings because they carry a message. And usually the message is clean your life up, stay away from sin and debauchery and gossip because they operate on those levels. You open yourself up to those types of entities or thought patterns. Now, there's a lot of, of things to, to that, that come into play is that you because you have demonic strongholds in the mind and how they get access to your life is through your thoughts. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the, your thought life, you definitely the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation are about renewing your mind, you know, having the helmet of salvation and and fighting against these these entities. But there's a lot a lot of people who um, who who believe this, and they're, they're teaching a piece of it. It's definitely about the mind and your in your belief and and knowing your identity, uh, because if you know who you are, then then you know nothing or no one can tell you who you are. So therefore you're full of the Holy spirit and you don't have any room for any type of foreign entities that want to come in and they'll come in through lies and through deception 
or you're worthless or you're this or you you're you know you're nobody or whatever people have said to you so the connection to demonic entities and and, and lies are are there satan is the father of lies when, we, when we're breaking down those words and those titles again the angel just means it, it means a messenger what satan when we break the word down for satan it means adversary right so a lot of times within within the scriptures when we see that word and it's not every time but a lot of times it's it's used as a title um you know your adversary which is which is some someone or something that that doesn't have the perfect will of god in mind for your life as peter was rebuked as acting as a satan wow. um so this is not you know, an entity that was coming, speaking through his body. It was this idea of, of something that was contrary to the will of God for, for Jesus and for what he was to do on the cross. So we see that happening. But as far as these entities, you got to understand too, uh, people would say that they're saying that Jesus was just meeting the people where they were, and they were a very superstitious people. And Jesus just played to their superstition. no, he was not playing to their superstition. He came, he's the truth. He didn't came to cater their lie. He didn't come to comfort them. He called them out. He told them what was going on. He understood when it came to spirits in that, that can be summoned on the other side. He knew this when, mm -hmm. when they, they said that Jesus was operating uh, as a, a Satan Beelzebub. or he was operating under the, the, the influence of Beelzebub. Mm -hmm. So if we want to get down and break down who the prince of these demons are, and we're talking about Satan and people are saying, yeah, Satan's not the, 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 you know, the king of the demons. You may be right. The scripture says that Beelzebub, Beelzebub is, and, and it's mentioned of one time throughout the entirety of the scripture. And, and Jesus was accused of that, but he also gave reverence to Solomon and how, because Solomon was known for working with disembodied spirits and extracting knowledge and information from them because of the authority that he had over them. But Jesus says that you have one that's greater than Solomon with you now. So wow. there's a lot of stuff going on to say exactly what they are. They definitely get, get um, access to you through your thought life and, and through your beliefs. Um, but take this for example as well. When Jesus was casting out the um, uh, spirits out of the demonized man, he didn't just send them to hell. He didn't say they're gone. They'll never be back. For one, he told the he he told one woman that you know if you don't repent and and stop doing these things, there's greater ones that are coming back to you. But he also casted some into the pigs, mm. and those people lost their livestock. They casted demons into the pigs, and the pigs ran into the water because of these thought forms. Like, why would Jesus take take one thought out of an, an individual and put it into a pig? Those were entities, and those mm. entities were were stuck in the bodies of those pigs. So. There's a lot more to it than just your thought life or Jesus catering to your your superstitions. Jesus mm -hmm. does not care about any superstition or or meeting you where you are. He's he's come that we may know life and and know it more abundantly. And the first thing you got to do is deal with all of your crazy superstitions because we all have them. So, you know, th there's a lot to it. You know, and, and I I see where a lot of these people are coming from for sure because because the connection between the thought life and how they get access to, to your auric field. And, mm. and, but there's so much, there is so much going on that we, we don't even know. I mean, totally. we were talking about different entities or, or a demon, um, microscopic entities and organisms that are at war in, in the spirit world on your body and around you and, and all over the place. So we, we like to, uh, we like to be able to explain exactly what's going on. But what I found is that once we, you know, feel like we're experts on this one subject, we find out so much more that we don't know about. So there's, you definitely have an, inter, uh, uh, an enemy who gets access to you um, through your thought life. So. Mm. Wow. And you're right. We could go so deep here. Um, we've already hit over an hour, hour and 10 minutes. This has been awesome. Uh, just a last couple of questions, man. Like, what would you say to somebody who is struggling in their thought life right now? And maybe they believe that God doesn't love them or, you know, whatever, they're too far or too far gone or they've never known love. So it's too hard. Anything you'd say to them? Yeah. I don't think that, uh, that anybody's too far gone for, for the love of God. Um, you know, we, we've been ruled by our, our emotions, you know, and, 
how we feel. And again, what comes into place of how we feel? Does diet come into play? Do the planetary alignments come into play? I believe that all of that stuff could have some bearing on us, but it doesn't it, it doesn't speak to the, the deeper part of of our of our soul that that Jesus died, you know, to to win us eternally and to, to bridge that gap, anything that separated us from the love of God. And listen, do not settle for second best. Do not do not cater to anyone's superstitions. Do not ca cater to the ones that you've created in your mind. The truth is, is that you're loved with an everlasting love, that there's nothing that you can do that that you're beyond saving and that the, the the greatest mystery and the greatest mystical experience comes through just this this intimate knowing of, of Christ in you and, and knowing that you have a direct access to the creator of the universe. The creator of all, everything that exists, even all of the dominions and thrones and demons and angels, all of that stuff bow to the supremacy of the Lord Jesus. So anything that is standing in the way between that, that becomes a Satan to you. That becomes an accuser. And uh, do not do not submit. Do not do not bow down to that. Know that he loves you with an everlasting love and you're one breath away from his peace. You're one second away from his love. And uh, and just I, I urge you to explore that. Come on. Amazing. Last thing, uh, what would you say to someone who has had experiences like you have from the, when they were children? Maybe they're seeing things, they see in the realms, they walk into places they can, you know, I know of two people already that have been through this from when they were young and had nobody to talk to, you know, yeah. and just like you said at four, you have this paralysis. So there's a physical thing. They've also had some physical things happen, but they don't have a place to go. Uh, any advice for them? They can't obviously go to some of their church stuff. Yeah, um, we have a we have an online community. You know, we got people all over the world who who feel marginalized and displaced. And, you know, we hear it all, all the time where people say, you know, um, telling people that they're not alone, mm. you know, and it's kind of cliche. You're not alone, man. He knows mm -hmm. or I know or whatever. But just how powerful that is. For people to feel like, hey, I'm the only one going through this. So when it comes to demons or an, an enemy, it wants you to get you off by yourself. I mean, even Jesus told Peter that Satan has desired to sift you as wheat, mm -hmm. to get you by yourself. And I want to let you know that you're not alone, that there's people out there just like you, that you don't uh, just exist, that you have a calling. And there's a reason you went through that stuff. You're, you're and, and it's usually that you have an empathy to help other people that you can relate to, to people who have been through similar stuff that nobody else can relate to. So, you know, we say get, get plugged in with a, com a community of people, go to where you're celebrated, not tolerated. You know, I, we, we do our podcast. It's a, it's a, a live stream community. We also meet weekly. I'm not the only one. There's a bunch of beautiful people out there who are, who are open about those experiences and they're, and they're open to working with you. And, uh, and just to, to let you know that God has greatness on the inside of you. And it's, it's not all for naught. There's a reason that you've experienced that. There's a reason that you're attracted to some of those things. And the more you pray, the more stronger those urges come and it doesn't go away. There's a reason for that. So, you know, we have to explore that. We have to pray with to ask God and show us why it is so that we know who we are and everything's in our identity, knowing that mm -hmm. you're loved and that you have a calling on your life. So get plugged in with with some good people who who are going to honor you where you are for sure. Boom. How can they find your community? Is it on your website? Yeah. Truthseeker.com. We have a discord um, and it's just it's a chat app. It's kind of like WhatsApp, I guess, is the big thing. Cool. So we have a discord community and then. We, we meet Thursday nights for prayer and for worship and just for discussion, just to roll ideas off of each other and make make myself available. And um, and and we have a lot of webinars and do a lot of cool stuff like that. But, yeah, you can go to truthseeker.com. You can email me if you have any questions and I'd love to speak with you. Awesome, man. So, again, guys, the link is there in the caption. Check it out. Connect. And I hope you got blessed like I got blessed. Uh, Derek, Truth Seeker, thank you so much for your time, bro. This was amazing. Um, I just want to say that I honor your journey, honor your calling and your walk and the doorways you're opening up for people to walk through behind you. So thank you so much for being with us, man. Thanks so much for having me, bro. And uh, feelings mutual. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Boom. So you can stay with me, but everyone else, we're going to say goodbye. You can obviously rewatch this. This is going to stay on here. It's going to go on YouTube. It'll be on iTunes and all that good stuff, Spotify. So you can check it out there in the next week. So bless you guys. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Faith and patience, faith and patience.
patience means allow it to happen, stay the same, stay persistent, keep going. Faith, know that it can happen at any moment. Get excited, because it can happen at any moment. You're so close. Don't quit now. Keep pushing. You got this.